Day five of lockdown, a rise in cases, but not as big as a rise as some modelling was projecting. We have, of course, had our first death over the weekend. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern is with us. A very good morning to you. Good morning. Let's deal with the mixed messages and whether or not you've got some regrets on this, how far to the beach, whether we take a car, should we go up a hill, down a dale, etc. Should we have worked through this a little more clearly to start? Oh, I think the messaging around staying local has always been clear, but Michael will concede one point because it's quite obvious no one's locked down New Zealand before. No one's restricted movements to this extent. Um, this is something that we did in a 48-hour period, and so I was always open. It wasn't always going to be perfect. The principle of what we were doing has remained the right thing. Okay. Should there be a singular voice, though, from here on in, that what they say goes and the answer is the answer and we're not going to spend the next four weeks asking well, more questions. Now, on that, that example that you've, you've noticed now, total consistency, but I do need to make sure that particularly yourselves are able to access more than just me. The Director General of Health, for instance, has such an important role to play. Um, Commissioner Bush uh, on the operational side. So I do I do think it's important that those um, individuals are part of our public facing oh, of course. response as but well. But that was part of yep. the problem. They all told me a different thing. Uh, and we have resolved that issue, Mike, but actually, you know, one of the reasons Commissioner Bush was taking that position was he just didn't want to see people out and about uh, well beyond their homes, which is the right point. We don't. The moving feast that is halal, for example, are we continuing to make it up as we go along? Uh, and again, those are some issues that within a 48-hour period won't necessarily be resolved from the very beginning, but will be resolved. And we were very open about the fact that as we went through, as issues were uh, arising, that we would seek to resolve those. But our starting point was to be as firm as we could on the universal shutdown uh, of businesses and retail-facing businesses. And that included those butchers who were specifically halal. Uh, MB uh, have, from the outset, said almost actually been working through access to halal meat as part of our response. Um, but our view was start uh, uh, tight and then look for where there are reasonable exceptions. Are you going down the track of unfairness though? Because already you've had the argument over butchers and greengrocers saying, well, hang on here, we, why can't we do business? The moment you why... open one sort of butcher, you can't open another one. And they're going, wait, wait a minute, that's not fair. And we haven't, Mike, we haven't. What we're seeking is actually whether or not that meat can be made available at supermarkets. Okay. As far as, um, see, for example, Warehouse was, um, they're, they're apoplectic. That they claim black and blue, for example, they got ministry advice and legal advice that they were essential, hence their comment, hence they're now facing a half million dollar fine from the stock exchange. Um, I don't know that they are apoplectic. Um, they made a very bold statement and they had no confirmation that they would be an essential service. They claim they got it from India. straightforward to me. Uh, incorrect. So um, I'll just leave it. They're to the making that up. Be on that one, All right. uh, Mike. As far as I, as far as I'm concerned, there had been no final decision on it. that. Was going through ministers. Ministers had not met to make that decision. Are we? Are you going to change the rules? I'm assuming you're going to change the rules around Friday and Sunday trading for Easter, aren't you, to keep them open? Um, I got asked about this yesterday, and you might have heard me say that um, this was something that I wanted to talk directly, or have at least our responsible minister talk directly to the supermarket. So uh, there's a couple of issues at play here. On the one hand, we want people to have access to uh, obviously our essential services, the ones that remain open. On the flip side, I also wanted to check whether or not supermarkets were counting on that as a day to replenish. Um, people, of course, are still in going to their supermarkets. will be seeing some of the, the stocks or some of the shelves haven't been uh, restocked. That's not because of inadequate supply. Some of them are still trying to catch up to panic buying that we had some um, some days ago. And so we're checking directly in. As you can imagine, if supermarkets are able to open, they will want to open. Yep. So I'm, I'm looking at And if they want to open, you'll let them open. Is that fair enough? For me, that's just going to be based on, on their feedback on what is going, what their needs are at this point, because we want to give New Zealanders as much availability as we can at the moment. A so million, a million a people... very honest sure. conversation. Okay, no worries. The, the, the million people are arguing there are no more specials in the supermarkets anymore for obvious reasons. Is that fair enough? Are we being fleeced or not? Well, we can't. We don't obviously have um, legal footing to force specials, but we do on price gouging. Um, I'm going to say a little bit more on that today because we've been getting a lot of feedback through. Very specific, and I've even been so specific that when I've heard the stories about the collie and the broccoli, I've called the minister and said, "Have you been checking in?" And he has daily. Is there gouging? Uh, where he's had, not not that we've discovered. We had cases of 
chickens having the wrong weight loaded in and so coming out at the wrong price. We've had some produce where there's been supply issues. In those cases, some chains, supermarket chains have said, look, if it's actually exorbitant, we just won't stock it rather than have those really high prices. I mean, why would you price gouge um, on cauliflower, for God's sake? Yeah, yeah. So, look, we haven't had evidence of it, but we are keeping a very close eye on it. What number health-wise? Um, by the way, Ian Lees Galloway, now, we've been trying to get him on for a week. I want to talk about work visas, the number of people who are needed for harvesting around this country. They're always short of hands anyway, far less when they can't come into the country. He's not allowed to come on this program because he's not on the right committee. What's that about? Well, I, I, I can speak to that right now rather than get in the ins and outs of his availability. Mike, have you got a question you want to ask? How many people in the country with work visas? Oh, well, look, if you'd given me that, that an hour before I came on the show, I'd give you the number. But if you want to know about flexibility of work visas, that is something that Ian Lees Galloway is working on. We had a conversation about this last night. Um, of course, we have a lot of people who, for instance, will be on work visas who will be working in the tourism sector, who now obviously will be, in many cases, jobless. And at the same time, we have harvesting needs. So we're working on whether or not we can have some flexibility in the settings to enable those individuals. And when you say you're working um, on flexibility, what, 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 what possibly can be the impediment? You go down to Queenston and go, who's out of work? Come with me. Have I got some stuff for you to pick? Well, there's a little bit of also making sure that we're not relocating people across the country in a way that makes it difficult for us to maintain the health settings that we have at the moment as well. But actually, in some of the areas where we've got those issues, in Queenstown, actually, there are ways I think we can keep it regional. In other parts of the country, it'll be a bit around work visa availability, but also actually our existing workforce, people who will be out of work who we could place into those jobs too. What number? But either way, Mike, we're working on it. Okay, what number do you want to see before we drop to level three? In terms of cases, it's actually more about what the cases are telling us. For instance, you know, even now we are still we are still um, doing contact tracing for every case, uh, and so of course that means that we can find out how someone um, uh, contracted COVID, uh, and that will tell us whether we have community transmission. So uh, it's not just the sheer number, because actually if we have 100% of those cases all having come from overseas, that tells us still that we have the disease under control um, to a to a certain extent. So that's that's what we're looking for. Do you still defend no compulsory quarantining when people arrive in the country at the airport at the moment, whether they've got a temperature or not? In other words, they're allowed to wander off into the country, maybe have it, maybe oh. don't? Oh, we actually do have that now. Um, several several days ago now, um, we put in, given that the numbers overseas and internationally were just continuing to rise, uh, a, any risk assessment would tell you that proportionately the number of New Zealanders coming in were more likely to be affected. So uh, the triaging at the airport now, if you're symptomatic... That's what I'm saying. Um, you are, if you're not you symptomatic, are, you're let through. Uh, no, not necessarily. If but you, you do are. not have a self No, if you do not have a self-isolation plan that's adequate, you will also be quarantined. That's what I'm asking. You're still, you're still trusting people to self-isolate. There were 33 doctors who came into Australia yesterday who were told to self-isolate. They disappeared around to Australia. When they went back to give them the paperwork, they'd gone. You can't, um, trust, pe you can't trust people. We have at the moment the police conducting self-isolation compliance check. They did 1,700 of those checks. They tell me the majority are complying. So you are still confident that you've made the right move on this? Uh, it I, in a perfect world, Mike, in a perfect world, uh, you might have a situation where you had facilitated quarantine for everyone, but tens of thousands of New Zealanders have come home even since we had the border controls. So we've had a mixture of risk assessing. Those who don't have the ability to self-quarantine, we have done that. We have quarantined them. Those who are symptomatic, we have quarantined. For everyone else, we've sent the police to check on their doors. Uh, and I think that mixture of uh, response uh, was not only something that we could manage, um, but is probably the best use of our resource as well. If you're right and we've cracked this, what world do we go out into? And this is the next big problem, isn't it? We, we sit here basically COVID-free in a world that isn't, so we can't have planes flying, we can't have our borders open. What sort of country and economy is that, do you reckon? Oh, I think every country around the world is going to be who it hasn't got herd immunity, um, which just to remind the public herd immunity is roughly 95% of people having immunity. Usually we achieve that through a mixture of people having had something or vaccination. So I think, Mike, the whole world will be facing this issue. Uh, and together we're going to have to work through what the world looks like until we have a vaccination. Um, but 
for me, allowing uh, COVID-19 to run rampant through our country would not only devastate our economy, uh, it would devastate New Zealand. Well, it's already devastated our economy. It's devastating it as we speak on. I'm just thinking bigger picture, that if we can't deal with the world, then basically we're buggered, aren't we? Uh, No, no, because I think the alternative is that we have herd immunity and we lose tens of thousands of New Zealanders. I'd say that would bugger us too. Appreciate your time. Jacinda Ardern, the Prime Minister.